Every time we leave to go on a trapping trip, everybody always tells me, good luck. And what I always tell them is we don't need good luck, we just need good weather. Going into setting traps, we knew that it was gonna be bone dry. A lot of sand in the soil and basically just a trapper's dream. And it couldn't have been any better. The first two days we were there, it was perfect. Sets were going in great. We were seeing a lot of sign, but we knew what was coming. Man, this, this is one of the reasons why we come to the, west, the western states instead of down south or even in Illinois. We've got good coyotes in Illinois, but this is prime, just perfect colors, not missing a guard hair, silver colored, just exactly what a fur buyer is looking for. Beautiful coyote. That third day we were there, we were supposed to get rain, sleet, and snow. And this, the combination of those three things is probably the worst things you can have as a trapper. You know, rain doesn't bother me so much, as long as it's not too much. Snow really doesn't bother me. But when you combine all three of those things and then get a really hard drop in temperature, it's a nightmare. And that's exactly what happened. We got a little bit of rain, turned into some sleet and some snow, and then it freezing rained on top of that. So what we had, was a crust over the top of the traps and that third morning you know it, it probably cost us eight to ten coyotes just because the coyote couldn't set the trap off so we had to go back through all of our sets and basically not necessarily remake them but we had to go through and we had to knock that crust off the top and make it look as natural as we had the first time we set it. So last year we did a review about this time on a Duke 650 Pro and we didn't get our shipment in until this year. We've ran them a little bit in Illinois, now we're running them in Kansas and I just wanted to kind of go through and show you the modifications that we did. It didn't take much, but there was a few minor little details that we wanted to fix. Um, so first of all, you know, all the traps that we run, we, we slightly point these spring pins down just a little bit to kind of help that trap have a little bit of feet. Um, but one of, the, one of the major things that I noticed, um, you know, we run screen wire pan covers exclusively and it seemed to, to be a little bit light on the pan tension because all the pans on every trap I run, I, I slightly point them down so that it'll, it'll help that screen wire kind of go underneath the jaw. And whenever you do that, you, you change the angle of where that pan is hooked into that dog and it just, it, it lowered it to a pound and a half to two pounds, which is a little light, and we wanted to stiffen that up a little bit. So basically all you do is you take that dog and you put that slight bend in it. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but you can see where it's slightly pointing up. You know, a lot of the, the other um, styles of traps that have a positive trip pan system, you wanna lower the pan tension, you bend that dog down. This one, we bend it up just slightly. Now when you do that, you change the angle of, of this crossbar as well. So you just get your, you know, your trap pan adjuster and bend it whichever way it needs to go. And then this one is already set, so I'll show you how it, how it looks when we get done. Here's our pan cover. Slide it in there. And I don't cut a slit or anything. I just put it in there about right just shy of the jaw. And then we set it in there. Of course, that flips up on us while we're videoing. But one thing that I'll do before it goes in the ground is I'll put my thumb right there on the pan and then I'll pull back on this screen. And it just kind of puts a little bit of a crease right there and it helps it lay flat on that pan. Pop it in the night latch. And then as you can see, she's laying flat as a pancake, ready to catch some coyotes. But overall, 
This trap's been a beast. Um, you know, obviously you're gonna have some traps bend a little bit when you're trapping big coyotes in the Midwest on frozen ground because that ground's so hard. But honestly, I, I don't know if we've had a single trap that's been bent and we're gonna hit them hard here the last few days while we're in Kansas. This is kind of a cool teaching tool. Whenever you get snow on the ground like this, we were joking about it earlier, you really figure out how bad of a trapper you really are. Um, you can see every track in the snow. And this coyote right here, you can, you can see, came in on the other side of this fence, got downwind of the first set, and came over here. <clears throat> Brian actually just fixed it. You can see the tracks coming underneath this, the fence. He came around. But see all this snow, he, Brian's done fixed the set and made it look correct now. But before, you couldn't even see the dirt hole. So the coyote... Tap into ice on top of it. Yeah, we, yeah, we had snow and then it's been raining all morning. So it covered the dirt hole up. The coyote didn't know which way to attempt it because we always drill those holes at an angle. So he came around on the back side, kind of danced around a little bit on the front side as well. But he missed. Coyote came down this fence row and Evan ended up catching him down here. Here's the coyote. Pretty coyote, he's just wet, heavy fur, but perfect location. I mean, there's a million of these out here. You, I mean, you kind of go stir crazy whenever you're setting traps. You don't know exactly which one's to set, but this one, like we said, is right in the middle of this big valley, this big cattle pasture. They, cows are on that end of the pasture. We've got to drive a long ways in to get to this set and then turn around and go back. We normally don't like to turn around and backtrack, but we felt like we just let it hunt. We're here for five or six days. We need to get locations out, and this was one of them. I think the biggest takeaway from this video and the series that we've been doing is, is you can really never be too prepared. We went into this trip, we had a thousand pounds of wax dirt, we took everything with us to make wax dirt while we were there, but there's some things you just can't control and, one, and number one is the weather. And I think a lot of times whenever guys are you know, interested in getting into trapping or they want to start, you know, they, they think that you can just buy the traps and you can go set them in the ground. And, that's one thing that a lot of guys don't get to see what we do a lot is, is the preparation before we actually leave to go somewhere. We spend days in the shop making sure the traps are in the right conditions, making sure that they're prepared, ready to go, so they're scent free, they're waxed, they're clean, they're ready. Just All we got to do when we get there is we pull it out of the trap bin and we go and make our dirt hole set. We don't want to have to worry about if that trap's going to fire or if it's bent or you know, second guessing yourself about maybe if it if it's not waxed properly and they're going to smell the trap underground, you, you can't have all those thoughts running through your head while you're trying to make these sets. You need to be 100% prepared, ready to go when the time comes to put it in the ground. So it's the last day and we're trying to get Evan to talk on camera, but I don't think he's going to do it. He's definitely not going to do it. <laughs> we just pulled up on a triple. Um, this little fence line right here that just kind of connects to, I don't know, it's not even a connector really. It's just a fence row that kind of comes around high ridge. And we've been waiting on it to produce all week. We caught one coyote and a badger and a, I think a coon, but today we pulled up and had a triple. Insane. But today's the last day we're pulling traps. I don't even know what our count is. We're up to six already and we haven't even made it through a tenth of the line. So this could be a pretty interesting day. We just got a text, we got one in a feedlot. So that makes seven. So yeah. Good stuff. We got a triple, a double, a single, and an Evan that won't talk on camera. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, you can. What the hard is that? What do you think about Kansas? I don't know. Just the terrain so much different out here than Illinois. It's just... Different coyotes, different grade of fur, just different stuff.
You know, I feel like we did fairly well for the time we were there. We were only there for five check days. We killed 68 coyotes and we were only trapping a concentrated area. We didn't have a really long line spread out over a two county area, but we did do a lot of networking while we were there. We met a lot of new landowners. Next year, we go back out there, the sky's the limit, and we don't need good luck. We just need good weather. This is the last trap of the trip. We're pulling everything today. This is the last trap we pulled up on. It's got a nice coyote in it. And if you look behind me, right here, I had a little trail camera going. So hopefully, let's see what we got here. Oh, it's full. It means it might've got it. We're trying to get some footage of a coyote getting caught. So let's see if we got him right here. Absolutely textbook for what we teach. As, as coyote trappers and how to place your traps and how a coyote, um, how he approaches a set and when where his foot lands in, you know, relation to his nose and, and wind, and, wind and, and how they do it. So check this out. Boom. If you watch that right there, I'll back it up. If you watch his chin and where that foot lands right there under his chin, and that's, that's going to be off set just a little bit from that hole and back nine to 11 inches. Right footed coyote. Yep. Pretty neat. Boom. Caught. Is the sixth coyote in the spot? Yeah, that's the sixth coyote in this one location. We got three traps right there. Lots of scent here. And that was actually in a Duke 550. Way to go, Evan. Good trip. Absolutely. Kansas 2020.